Hi, I'm Joe James. Welcome to part eight of my or How the Autistic Brain Works series. I am basically going to explain to you today about synaptic pruning. It is a scientific term that means that uh, the brain is basically trimming away the neurological pathways that it no longer needs. Um, this happens during childhood, um, usually at the age of two, um, and then during the teenage years. Um, it is a very difficult thing for a brain to go through, but basically it is just part of a normal uh, development. Um, so basically what is happening during synaptic pruning or brain trimming is the brain at some point no longer needs certain neurological pathways. Those pathways are there for learning and behavior of a certain age. Now, when the brain no longer needs them, it discards them. During that process, it is very, very draining on the person. So it's not a coincidence that there is the terrible twos and the teenage years. I like to call them the Kevin years. Um, so basically when a brain is going through this, it is lethargic, it is uh, difficult to concentrate on things, to react to things. You know, the, um, the neurological pathways between your amygdala and your frontal lobe are slowed down hugely. So that's the emotional side of your brain um, and then the decision part of your brain. So those, those sort of emotions are always heightened. That's why teenagers tend to be a lot moodier, a lot more reactive and they don't tend to think things through. Whereas adults, we might react and then we'll think things through because that process happens a lot quicker. The older you get, the better you get at it. So uh, don't be so hard on your teenager because basically it's like waking up with a hangover, but you've never drunk. Um, and you know, that's part of the synaptic pruning. It's a difficult process, but Studies have shown that autistic brains either don't go through this or go through this at a much, much slower rate, which would explain developmental delays and would also explain a lot of our behavior. So I'd like to explain to you from my perspective and how my brain works why having the neurological pathways of a baby and then never having them leave me or leaving me very, very slowly has made me the interesting and <laughs> slightly crazy person that I am today. So a lot of autistic people will think of themselves in like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of way. You know, one minute you're like totally okay um, and you seem like you're you yourself and the next minute you might be having a tantrum or the next minute you might be acting like a moody teenager or the next minute you might be acting like a, <clears throat> a very up yourself, I guess. I like to call it confidence. Um, scientific professor, you know. <clears throat> I call this the three stages of Joe and all of them are present at all times in my brain because all the neurological pathways that I have had throughout my entire life are still present. So I can definitely think and act like a very, very small child because those pathways still exist. And it, not just because I'm a man. I know that's what you're thinking. All men are a little bit childish. Perhaps all men go through synaptic pruning different to women. I don't know. That's not my expertise. But who knows? This 
I'm talking about. So this this is my Pooh Bear. Uh, many of you might recognise him. Uh, he does appear in a lot of photography. He was actually on the Canon website when I got interviewed by Canon because uh, he's a Canon camera. And he is uh, is my buddy. I love him very very much. Um, and he is my emotional support bear. Why does a 38 year old grown man need a child's toy? Well, because I'm also a child. Because those neurological pathways still exist. So I very, very much feel at times like a vulnerable child. I will have what seems to be temper tantrums, like a child, when things don't go my way. Because I need things to go my way. It's very, very important to me. And when they don't, I need my emotional support back. So basically, I, I stim. Um, stimming is a, a, a form of release. Um, it is a, a release for me. Um, it's a form of release um, when I'm, I'm feeling unhappy. So I stim with my hand. You know, my hand moves a lot. Um, it's a very common stim. That's why fidget spinners are so good. Um, but I, I squeeze Pooh Bear. <laughs> he takes a lot of abuse, this poor bear. So I, he, gets, he gets squeezed a lot. So I squeeze him a lot. And it's really good. It's kind of like a stress ball, I guess. So yeah, that's, that's Baby Joe. Um, then I've got uh, Teenage Joe, where I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything. I'm fed up. Everybody's against me. It's not my fault that I can't be bothered. I just, I just don't have the energy. All I want to do is sit around and play video games all day long. I just, I just want people to leave me alone. That is very, very common uh, with autistics. We do love our video games. It's a way of us getting lost in another world or for a lot, not for me, I don't like online gaming, but for a lot of autistics, it's the only way they can actually interact with other people and make friends. And they are very real friends um, on, in online gaming. Um, I have made friends in online gaming. It didn't really work out very well, um, but that was when I was younger. Um, but now I, I don't online game because for me it's too frustrating and I end up melting down and unfortunately breaking these um, but uh, yeah I'm good at fixing them so that's really really handy so that's that sort of teenage you know moody and you know but uh, you know also very curious uh, and um, very very loving at the same time it depends on how you catch me so yeah that's teenage Joe me personally I feel more comfortable as baby Joe um, but that's maybe because my wife Maddie God was me, I don't know. Um, so then, which is, this is most of the time, most of the time, we got Adult Joe. I, I don't know why the glasses matter. I, I wear glasses for reading. But this is the only way I can really describe Adult Joe, I guess. Uh, I don't have a lot of props. Um, so this is Adult Joe. Uh, so I, you know, I obviously, I have a job. Uh, I am a manager at my job. I'm in charge and responsible for people. I am in charge and responsible of my children. Um, I am responsible for my household along with my wife. We are a partnership, very, very much a 50-50 partnership. Um, but I have responsibilities. You know, I have a adult life. You know, I earn money, I pay taxes, I drive a car. You know, all the things that uh, grown-ups do. Um, but that uh, doesn't always make me happy. I do them. Uh, I get on with it. A lot of the time, I am masking through it. Uh, masking is basically putting on a show for the neurotypicals so we blend in. I'll do a whole video on it. Don't worry. So that is how... I go through my life and, and, and the craziest thing is, for me, um, that those three stages can hit me all in one day, sometimes in 
one moment. It, it really depends on what's going on. So I've got all that going on in my head 24 seven, which is why I basically sleep for about four to six hours a night um, because there is so many neurological pathways. There's so much going on in my head um, and this could also be a reason why we're so very hypersensitive because babies are very hypersensitive. They have to be. It's, it's how they pick up things. So it, that also could be a reason why the autistic brain is so hypersensitive and so geared towards learning new things. Because that's what we do as children. We're inquisitive. We learn. We're desperate for information. Our brains are sponges. And that doesn't stop for autistic people. We suck everything in. That is very, very overwhelming. You know, you will never ever understand it unless you're autistic, how that feels to have a constant mass of information just building up in your head, which is why we, we just talk about it. We, it's almost like a release. So we learn it, we learn it, we learn it. And if we don't talk about it, if we don't release it, we, we, we have meltdowns, we, we can't cope with things, you know, so talk to your autistic child if they are able to communicate with you, but if they're not, it could be that their synaptic pruning has gone through a different and slower process than mine. As someone who is more in control of my brain, Maybe that's due to the fact that my synaptic pruning is happening, but just at a slower rate. It's all a hypothesis, a working theory. The synaptic pruning thing has been pretty much proven, but how it affects the brain is up in the air, as they say. But that, this is my thoughts. This is, this is my analysis of that. I must say that I've worked with another autistic uh, individual who happens to be uh, my best friend. And uh, he was also saying that the reason we are probably so sensitive to things was because of the amount of information that is going through our heads. You know, it's, it's, it's a theory, it's a hypothesis that we've both come up with. I ran this hypothesis by uh, an autistic professional, someone who is highly respected in the field of autism studies. Um, he's written many, many books. He's a very good friend of mine. And he agrees that it is a very, very good working theory. And, um, but the problem is, is, is that there's no sort of way of, of, uh, of proving it at this point in time. But I believe it's true. Um, I've thought about it a lot, and I think uh, I think I, I think it might actually help. So, if I'm rambling, I do apologise. Like I said, it's a working theory; it's all going on in my head. But it could really explain why certain autistics at different ages aren't growing as fast as a neurotypical, and also why autistics at certain ages aren't going far, as fast as each other. So my friend has two autistic children, one of them's 15, one of them's just turned 14, but the 15 year old acts more like sort of a, a 12, 13 year old, and the 14 year old acts more like a seven, eight year old. So there's, there's quite a big gap, you know, um, so it, 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 it is interesting to, to sort of look at how different autistic brains develop, but I, I, I do believe that that development is, uh, is, is based on the synaptic pruning. So I hope this helps, and I hope it wasn't too complicated, and I hope it didn't go on too long, and you probably turned off by now. So if you did make it to the end, well done. And uh, yeah, so see you next time.